hundredths. So use an error that's to the nearest thousandths because you're trying to get a little more accurate. You wouldn't, right. Okay? Anybody have any questions on this one? You sure? Let me give you a note just, just, for, uh, just to remind you here. Where you're headed, I don't think at all in these sections in the beginning, although we're headed there. Do you guys remember? What is, what is the, the sample mean formula? What is the sample, uh, sample standard de deviation formula? Do you guys remember? What's the sample mean formula? Sum of x over n. The sample standard deviation, isn't the de uh, sample standard de deviation the square root of the variance? What's the variance? Remember that? n sum x squared minus sum x quantity squared over n times n minus 1. So I'm going to tell you guys now this, just so we're clear, that some people actually never really did this. You know, they just never did it. They never thought it's important, I guess, or didn't spend a lot of time on like variance or standard deviation. Didn't want to compute these things. But what's going to happen now in the remaining sections? Not in this chapter, but you see this value, this sample mean, you see the sample standard deviation, you see these things here? They just didn't fall out of the sky. When you take a sample of data, you're asking college students, how much cups of coffee do you drink per day? And they're giving you numbers. With that list of numbers, you're computing what? The mean and the sample standard deviation. You're computing that. So where we're headed here, some of those questions, at least in the beginning, they're not going to do that to you. In the beginning, they're going to give you sample size, sample mean, sample standard deviation. They're going to give you all those nice things. But what's going to happen in, you know, what's going to eventually happen is they're going to start to ask you a few questions like, we're not going to give it to you now. You're going to have to compute what? The mean. You're going to have to compute the what? St variance and standard deviation. They're going to ask you guys to compute it. They're not going to spoon feed it to you. So what's going to happen is some people are going to come and go, oh, do we have to do all this? And I'll, and I'll be honest with you. I'll say, well, um, for some of those homework questions, it is a lot of data. They intend for you to use um, a computer or something. Now you may say, well, we don't really use computers here very much with this, and that's true. But we're going to get to a section really soon, and a chapter really soon, in which our data set isn't going to be large, like 250 data values. It's going to actually be small, a small data set. In that case, it is reasonable, and I'll say it now. I will ask you this. Where we're headed, you guys are going to have probably estimation questions where we're headed, where the sample size is small, and you have to compute the what? The mean. And you have to compute the what? Standard deviation. So I'll tell you guys now, that's where we're headed. So what you should do is probably do what? Practice that mean, practice that standard deviation, because that's what's expected. OK, you, you see what I'm saying? You may not see the context now, but I'll, maybe I'll start to talk about it now. For example, in real life, it's really not um, practical at times to take large samples. Because although we, oh, it's still here. Because they are expensive, and they are also what? Time consuming. So what happens now is we're going to look at a situation now where we don't take a large sample, we take a small sample. Okay, so this is a small sample example, and we'll talk about what that is. But here's how things have worked. Um, car insurance. Car insurance. 
Okay, who has the most expensive car here? Anybody? No. I don't have a Hummer. I don't have a Hummer. That's not true. I wouldn't, I wouldn't drive a Hummer. It wastes too much gas. Who has the most expensive car? Anybody? Who knows of an expensive car? Huh? A Lamborghini. <laughs> All right. I think I could spell Range Rover. Lamborghini, I'm not so sure how to spell that. So, Okay, let's go with that. A Lam, L-A what? M. B O R. G. H. I. Ah, that would have thrown me. A Lamborghini. A Lamborghini. Do you guys know how expensive are Lamborghinis? Oh, 300000 400000 dollars I don't know. So let's say the cost of a Lamborghini is about, we'll take the middle, $350,000, I guess. I don't know. What happens if, do you guys know, once upon a time, to determine a portion of your car insurance, what insurance companies would do is what they would buy cars and then they would crash the cars in what they call a typical collision maybe a collision being I don't know 40 miles per hour so they crash cars in a typical collision and this is how this is how it was done okay so if you went out and you took a sample of let's say 250 you went out and you bought 250 Lamborghinis to crash and fix and then take the mean repair cost. How much would that cost? That's 250 times what? Times 350,000. How much money is that? That's a lot of money. You guys get the picture? So what's happening is this, that instead of taking a large sample and crashing those cars to get the typical repair cost, you're going to take a what? Small sample. Okay? Because if you went to your boss and you said, look, I have the perfect idea. Let's go buy 250 Lamborghinis. You're going to, you're, they're going to fire you because you don't have to do that. Okay? So a small sample is any sample that is less than 30. Okay? Any sample size less than 30. So for example, what you can do then is this. We're going to create a scenario and we're going to say um, a sample of 11 repair bills reveals. A mean of, hmm, this is a Lamborghini. You crash it and repair it. Oh, uh, let's say a mean repair bill of, oh, I don't know, $35,000 with a standard deviation of maybe $11,000. Okay? So we're looking at a sample of 11 repair bills, reveals a mean of $35,000 with a standard deviation of $11,000. Use the 99% confidence level to estimate the true mean. Okay? And so here's what's happening. When you estimate the true mean, what format do you use? Anybody know? What's your format again? It's going to be what? It's going to be the mean minus the, the error, less than true mean, less than the mean, plus your what? Margin of error. 
Okay? And so we're using our mean format, the estimate the mean format. Is that right? Okay. Here's some more information. The error formula is defined to be what? Right, we're going to say, well, we're going to say z alpha over 2, s over square root of n. Okay? However, Here's what's going on. I'm going to change that z to a what? t, yes. A t alpha over 2. This is the only difference. The format is the same. The only difference is that you're going to use the t distribution for a critical value. OK? And here's what's going on. The t distribution is very similar to the z distribution. Okay? The t distribution is known as the student's distribution. So the irony of this is that the student's distribution is just a name. It has nothing to be nothing there's n has nothing to do with being a student. It just so happens that a high school math teacher who essentially created this distribution to use to approximate the normal distribution for small samples, okay, you happen to use the pen name of student. So when you think of student's distribution, that's just the pen name. Okay, the student's distribution is used to approximate the normal distribution under small samples. Okay. Under small samples. So now the process includes only this thing that's new. Determine the critical value for a small sample. That's it. Okay, so the new part is how to actually read the t distribution. Okay, here's the deal. The irony is that the t distribution in finding critical values is easier to use than the z distribution in finding critical values. Okay, the only thing I have to introduce to you now is we're going to take a closer look to this t table. So I have to define for you only one thing to use a t table. And that is what's known as the degree of freedom. Now, the degree of freedom has an arbitrary definition that goes way beyond the scope of the course. However, we use it here. The degree of freedom for our book is going to be defined as 1 minus the sample size. That's the degree of freedom. It is n minus 1. OK? n minus 1, degree of freedom. And so here's what's going to happen in my t table. All I identify as a row is the degree of freedom and as a column, the level of significance. In other words, if I know alpha and I know the degree of freedom, what I get here in the intersection is actually t alpha over 2. This is my critical value. OK? So now the focus is going to be for us to not finish the problem, but what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to actually practice now using that t table. However, what I decided to do is actually for your t table. <laughs> 